Gav Pietisserie Home Kitchen, and today we will be making mud cake. And as you can see, my fan base is forever growing. Do you want something to say to any of the other audience members that might be watching? Number one fan, hey? Can't be replaced, no. You can't get the number one fan spot. But if you want to join, you know what the subscribe button looks like. You can click on that if you like. And just a few things before you start. What you want to do is you want to turn your oven on. If you have a fan forced oven, you want to get it to 150 and put it on your conventional settings if you've got a conventional fan force oven. If not, just put it on fan force and turn it down to about 125. This way you won't dry out your cake or your kettle first as well. And then the next thing you want to do is line your cake tin. These are all the ingredients that you'll need to get your mud cake made. We got some 70% cocoa dark chocolate, a block of butter, unsalted of course, you don't want salted butter or you'll get a weird taste in your cake, some caster sugar, some instant coffee, four eggs, some plain flour, some bicarb soda. And over here is what you'll need for your icing to finish off your cake. You'll need some icing mixture, some more butter, some dark chocolate melts, and some cream. You'd also need a quarter of a cup of canola oil as well. That just helps keep some moisture in your cake. So if your butter's just come straight out of the fridge, you probably want to cut it a little bit smaller than what's in there, but we've had ours sitting out on the bench for a little while. So what you want to do is you add your 450 mils of boiling hot water. Now mud cake is basically a liquid cake, so basically it uses your eggs and your flour to combine it and hold it together and give it its body and then the raising agent is your bicarb. So you just want to leave that in there until that turns into a liquid. Now it should only take about a minute or two minutes if your butter's a bit soft to get to the liquid stage. Okay just um, just stir it. Make sure it's all nice and melted in there. All right, if you if it's all melted, you just add your oil. Okay. Now since the oil is already at room temperature, it should just help reduce the temperature in there. Now you want your liquid to come down to a room temperature or just below 40 degrees, because if it's a little bit higher than that, it's going to start cooking your eggs as soon as you put them in, and you don't want that. With your eggs, you just want to gently whisk them into a liquid form. Basically it breaks them up. If you don't break them up well enough, and it just makes your cake really heavy and it's also even harder to mix it through your liquid mix so what you want to do is just get it until it runs like water basically and you don't want to over over whisk it because the eggs aren't supposed to be providing the aeration in your cake Okay, so you just want it to run like that. Just breaks up those egg whites. Now you probably want to just leave this about five minutes, then come back, add your eggs, and then you'll be good to finish off your cake. Okay, so now it's time to add your eggs. Okay, 
Don't lose your whisk in there. You're going to lose it. Hold it up here. Pour in the eggs. Okay. Make sure your chocolate mix is below 40 degrees. Add your eggs. Give it a mix. And what you will feel is that it gets nice and heavy. Okay, you can see it's already turned into a thicker consistency. Now I would scrape out my bowl, but I can't really do that holding a camera and trying to make cake. So we're just going to add our flour now. So you add your flour and your bicarb and you can see how easy it is to put this together if you've got everything weighed out and organized. Bit of shaky cam for everyone at home there because I'm a pro filmmaker right now. I've got the shaky cam happening. Anyone would think we're in an action movie right now. We can't keep track of what's happening because they keep on shaking the camera. Now you can sift your flour but that's only recommended if you've got old flour. Usually if you're using straight out of the packet flour it doesn't really need to be sifted. Okay, now you can see that we've got a nice goop-like consistency here. And you can see it's very bubbly as well. That's because it's still a little bit warm. And it's already activated your bicarb, which is a good thing. Grab your cake tin. Grab your cake tin. Bring it over to here. Move everything else out of the way. Grab a spatula. Give your cake mix a scrape down. Make sure you haven't missed anything. Okay. Okay, now it's time for it to go into the cake tin here. Now, this should be the right amount of cake mix for this cake tin. I'm just scraping out the bowl now. I've just got to scrape out this bowl and I'll be right back with you. So, nothing much to see here. So we filled the cake tin, and now it's time to go into the oven. Right, put it into your preheated fan-forced oven, and you want to cook it for about 50 minutes. Yeah, dishes. Yeah. It's taken about two hours to cook our cake, and now we just need to take care of it while it cools down. So what we do is get some cling wrap onto a chopping board here. And we're just going to flip the cake out. We've had it resting for about 10 minutes to let it cool down. So you cover it, wrap it up, and just leave it on the chopping board and let it cool down completely. Basically it keeps the steam around your cake. So that helps keep some moisture in there while it cools down. You can put it in the fridge if you want to decorate it any quicker but it's probably going to take about two hours in the fridge to cool down before you can actually decorate it. But since I've got to go out we'll just leave it there and we'll decorate it when we get back. Well that's where we're going to leave it for now. 
As you can see, I'm still sitting here. I'm still editing. It turns out it's a very lengthy video. About 33 minutes long. So, I'm going to give it the true review treatment. And then when we get to the last one, I'm going to give it the novel treatment. I'm going to chop it into two. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to release the footage gradually over the course of, let's say, a year. Okay. A few bits. Tops. I've got a dictator in this house already. He's not even three months old yet. He's already telling you what I can and can't do. Just wait till he learns the rocks. Oh, and in the meantime, if you want to follow my business, you can. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I guess you already found that out because you're watching this video. And um, yeah, we've got a webpage too. You can go check that out. Are you still watching? Why haven't you gone somewhere else yet? There's plenty of other videos on YouTube.